like making some serious money. So at the end of Welcome back to another episode here with the Young Startup. Today we have uh, my lovely girlfriend, um, as well as um, well, she works and does all of our social media management for us, uh, for the Zab Twins, and also some of our other brands as well. So, um, Zanae Teran, thank you for being on. I think it's long overdue, as you probably know and probably have mentioned to me a couple times. Um, but why don't you give a little intro to yourself, um, who you are, what you do, uh, talk a little bit more about your entrepreneurial journey, and uh, we'll dive right in. Okay, well, thank you for having me, finally. Only took you uh, a couple, a year or so. Um, my name is Zanae. I run a social media management agency called 23 Agency, and I also run a swimmer brand, um, a sustainable swimmer brand called Bellini Bikini. Um, I guess I could just go straight into, you know, starting Bellini Bikini because I started that first. Um, back in, I would say 2017 could have been a little earlier. I'm kind of not very good with my timelines, but when I was still in high school, I was trying to figure out, you know, what I wanted to do with my life. I had no idea. Um, I felt a little bit of pressure from the parents to go to university and study something that will require a stable job. Um, I mean, also on the other hand, they were very supportive when I decided to not do that, but, I, at the time when I was 16, I definitely felt like I was supposed to, you know, do something like my sister, go work in healthcare, or um, I was really interested in law, even though there was no way I was going to become a lawyer. So I was thinking maybe a paralegal, <laughs> but I'm glad I didn't do that either. Um, but yeah, so I was, I was 16 or so. And, you know, during the summer I was, I was known as the girl with the absurd swimwear collection. I can thank Victoria's Secret for that. Um, and I realized that I, it was really hard for me to find, you know, good staple swimwear that was going to last more than a season. I would buy always the, you know, the basics from Victoria's Secret, you know, the triangle top and the basic bottoms, but within, you know, a month of wearing them, the threads would be coming loose and they would just be sagging and they wouldn't look cute after a while. So I decided once I graduate high school, I was going to start a swimwear brand. Um, having danced my whole life, I obviously, and throughout high school, I didn't have a job. So I had no money to sit. I had no money saved for it. So my dad made an agreement with me that he would help me start my swimwear brand if I went to school. So I went to Blanche McDonald for fashion marketing. Um, I will say I feel I learned a lot of history about fashion. Did I learn things that were necessarily going to relate to starting a swimmer brand? Not really. Um, <laughs> a lot of it was more so like the marketing aspect, which of course it was called fashion marketing. So that made sense. But that kind of helped me realize uh, that I really like social media, which in turn led to me starting my social media management 23 agency uh, back in October. Cool. Um, yeah, let's let's talk more about Bellini Bikini because I think that's interesting. Um, you know, you found obviously some form of pain that you're experiencing. Would you say that there was also you like your friends or your family that was experiencing what you're experiencing about, you know, staples just not lasting a long period of time and uh, you buy for the name, but it's not necessarily the best quality out there. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to fashion in general, but I would definitely say swimwear, there's kind of two different people. There's the person that shops for something to last a really long time, something really good quality, or there's someone that really likes the trendy item that, you know, is in style for sometimes not even a full season nowadays with fast fashion things rotate through so quickly that you know you'll see something on everyone one week and next week it's no no one's wearing it um so yes and no um I definitely have a lot of friends that shop for the trendy items which is totally fine um but that just wasn't me and I knew there was going to be more people who were coming across the same situations that I was um actually, now that I, I think about it, there was one, one brand, it was called Moana Bikini. And I really love their quality. And this is kind of, I guess, also what helped me decide that I wanted to do staples was I liked their quality, but their suits were always very vibrant, outgoing patterns. They were always, you know, 
there would be one pattern on one side, another pattern on the other, because they were reversible. And I outgrew that really quick. I wore it when I was, like I said, 16, 17. And then once I graduated, I was like, no, this, there's no way I'm wearing this leopard print bathing suit with flowers um, out in public. <laughs> Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I think, uh, I think that's super interesting because, um, you know, a lot of people and like the markets that we're in, I, I, I go based off of data a lot of the times as well. And this is just a whole different type of research and, uh, you know, you're solving a need. And I think every business needs to solve from some form of a need and have like a passion to drive at the end of the day. Now, the other portion to uh, Bellini Bikini that you brought up was sustainability um, or sustainable swimmer brand. Why don't you talk about that? Why you think it's important? Um, how you go about being sustainable and uh, and how, how that's making an impact and, uh, you know, your business as a whole, but also helping, um, you know, those around us. So when I decided to make sure that the brand was going to be sustainable, I mean, it started out, you know, just the material was going to be sustainable just because, you know, that was the best quality that I could find. Um, but then I was like, why don't I take it another step further and make sure the entire brand is sustainable. And, you know, at this point in time, I feel like if brands aren't making that step, you know, they're, it's not the smartest thing to do you know we only have one planet so we should take care of it and um whether that's little things like you know using a craft liner instead of a plastic liner or making sure your your mailers are are biodegradable i think it's a really easy step and it was kind of just a no-brainer for me um when it comes to how we you know go about sustainability really every single aspect of the suit to the packaging and even how, you know, I try and run the business is um, I try to do it the most ethical way possible. So for example, all of the packaging, so the mailers, the liners, the little cotton bag that it comes with, uh, the stickers, the tissue paper, the boxes, any sort of influencer packaging is always going to be uh, biodegradable or recyclable. And a lot of the time it's made out of recycled materials as well, which is great. Um, yeah. Cool. No, I like that. I like that. And I think it's, it's a, a big impact and a lot of people take it for granted, but a lot of companies are making that shift right now. So good on you and Bellini Bikini for doing that. Um, I'd love to chat more about, you know, obviously, and I know it took you a while to get things started and everything like that. Like you had this dream, you had this vision, um, you know, you had a good plan as to, to how you wanted to go about doing it. But when it finally came to the point where it was like, oh my God, I'm starting this. What did that look like? Uh, what were some of the ups and the downs that you experienced? And, uh, you know, for people that are wanting to start like a private label or a custom bikini brand, um, what are some of the challenges that they can expect? Oh, there's a lot. Um, mm -hmm. So from idea to launch, it was almost, it was three to four years. I actually, I think actually, including the time I went to school. And so obviously the idea came to me when I was still in high school um, to give you some context. I launched the brand in March of 2020. And if we all remember clearly, uh, about a week later, we all went into lockdown. So it was a very big learning curve. I have no idea what business would be like if there was no such thing as the pandemic. I would have loved to experience that, but that was not the case. Um, so you can just imagine, I mean, I'm sure these are ups and downs a lot of people went through, but just, you know, figuring out how to market things, get your name out there, but you're not allowed to, you know, see people and people weren't leaving their houses. So it's, you know, not a lot of people were buying swimwear. Yes, you know, people were shopping a lot, but it's not like you were going to go, especially where we live here in BC, it's not like you were going to be going outside in March in a bathing suit anytime soon. Um, thankfully, I will say I did have a pretty good first year. Um, definitely, you know, I expected way less. I don't know if that was due to the pandemic or not or what, but there was, yeah, it was, it was, it was good, which was, um, very, I was very happy to see. Um, sorry, what was your other question? Uh, the other question is just like ups and downs, like challenges. Oh, yes. whole. It, it was just like a, a pretty loaded question. Um, yes, I know, yes. I know the like picking suppliers, that kind of stuff. I I've done a lot of that obviously, but, um, you know, talk around your experience with that and how challenging it was to find 
people that could have the right suits, but also do things that were more custom, all that kind of stuff. Yes. So I think the biggest issue that I ran into was finding someone who was ethical and very honest about it. Um, When it comes to fashion as a whole, you know, you can go on Alibaba and find tons of manufacturers. Are they good quality? Uh, when it comes to swimwear, not a lot. It's really hard to make swimwear. It's kind of like um, I always tell people lingerie is probably the next hardest thing to create. Um, it's very hard to make and to find someone who can do it well. So that was definitely a really big challenge. I did a lot of research. I actually, you know, met up with mine in Los Angeles before I committed to anything. I really wanted to get a feel for everything. And I ordered a lot of samples and all of that. Um When it comes to other sorts of ups and downs, I would say the biggest thing was just getting people aware of the product and what it was and so that, and helping people understand why it's sustainable and why you should be shopping sustainable. A lot of people think like, oh, it's sustainable. Okay. That's cute bonus, but like, I don't care. So trying to teach people about it and understand why it's important and not only just so that they can shop sustainably from my brand but from others as well I think a lot of people don't do research on where they're buying their clothes from Um, I think as a society we could all be a little bit better at that especially with brands like Shein and uh, Zaffle out there Um, you know you get what you pay for if you're paying three dollars for a shirt Uh, You can imagine that it probably costs them 10 cents to make it. So how much is that worker getting paid? Probably nothing. Um, They're probably being mistreated as well. So really just doing your research and learning. It's going to be also hard to learn. You know, people don't give out their manufacturer information, but brands shouldn't lie about that. (laughs) And if, (laughs) if they're smart, they'll tell you, okay, yes, this is, you know, what we insured was happening at our manufacturer. Um, you know, information can get out. They shouldn't be lying about it anyways, but yeah. No, for sure. And, um, you know, one other thing that you brought up there was, um, like communicating value, not communicating value, but communicating, well, communicating, um, why sustainable is good, like why we do this and how that was a challenge to get out there. How did you get that message across? What was your best form of doing so and the most effective? Social media, Instagram specifically, was definitely the best and easiest way to do it. Um, I won't even say it was easiest, but definitely the best way to do it. Um, I think social media, if you're not on social media, that is something, it's such a missed opportunity. It's free marketing. Anyone can have an Instagram account. Anyone can have a Facebook account. You just have to put in the work. People also expect that you're just going to blow up overnight. That's not how it works. Yes, there are TikToks that that happens to, but it's not that likely. So putting in consistent effort was um, into Instagram was was how I how I went about it. What do you define as def- our consistent effort? Uh, daily posting, constantly engaging with the uh, community making sure you're asking people questions, learning from them. You know, I tell people the bleeding bikini that where it's at right now is, is not the end goal. So I'm trying to learn, you know, what can I do to make the brand better? How can I make the product better? And the best way to do that is the audience that I have on social media, which like I said, it's another missed opportunity. If you're not on social media, you can learn so much about your brand and your products and how you can grow and what your customer actually wants. Cause you might want one thing. Like for example, I love side tie bikinis. I would, if I could create only side tie bikinis, I would, the audience does not want side tie bikinis. So that would be counterproductive for me to just do what I want. So it's nice to have that communication with them um, and consistently, you know, asking them what they want, what they want to see next and kind of helping them be a part of it. Cause that helps also build the community. Yeah. Yeah. What else can you speak to about community? Cause I know that's so important, especially when building a brand, like having this loyal kind of cult to, uh, to your brand or an effort that the, the brand is trying to go for, whether that's sustainability or, or beach lovers, for example, um, how does one go about building that community? I know that's always challenging uh, and, and probably a pretty loaded question, but uh, what are some tips that you can give um, to make sure that people are engaging with commu- with their community and building that from the get-go? Because um, obviously it's been very helpful for you. Yeah, I think before I even get into that, I should say, you know, your end goal when using, you know, your end goal with any 
brand should be to have customers who are advocates for your brand. So that you don't have to continue. Yes, you should obviously continue marketing, but so that you have other people to do it for you as well. Um, people that um, are very trustworthy and very helpful for you. Um, when it comes to tips on how to build a community. Yeah, what are some like tips, I guess, like, you know, like where do you find these people? Like in if they, let's say, let's say they follow you, how do you turn them? Because a follower isn't necessarily part of your community. How do you make them a part of your community? Um, whether that's through like, um, like for us, I think it's a matter of providing them value, keeping mm -hmm. them engaged, uh, running surveys. I mean, obviously, like, you know, like what you said, um, you know, you run stories, for example, like, what do you like this versus that for mm -hmm. patterns and all that kind of stuff? Um, is there any other thing? I think the biggest thing is like engagement. How do you get yes. these people engaged definitely. so that they stick around? Yes, there's definitely a lot of different ways you can help um, people engage with your content on social media. Um, one that I use the most, like you said, is, is stories. It's really easy. Uh, people like it. It's kind of like a mindless thing. Yes, they're a part of it. They're paying attention to it, but it's, it's easy for them to do it in their day. Um, also asking them questions, DMing them, you know, if someone is posting something of yours, talk to them, you know, be become friends with them. Like I have customers who consistently post my suits and I will DM them back and forth and we'll talk about it. And, you know, it might not even be about the suits, but we'll be talking about something else. Um, and that really helps your customers trust you. Um, I think some people forget, like some people, they try to, you know, build this massive brand and they think, I know people always say, you know, fake it till you make it. So like fake that you have this huge platform, but you don't, if you think about it, if you think about a brand, let's say the Bay, the Bay doesn't interact with their customers online and it would be weird if they did it. But since you're such a small brand, it's kind of an advantage that you have to be interacting with these people a lot of the times the person who you're talking to when you're talking to a small brand is the owner. Maybe there's someone that helps them, but a lot of the times for the most part, if they're new, it's going to be the owner. So that allows your customers to be building a relationship with you and it allows them to feel a lot more um, confident in you and your product. And um, it will in turn allow them to, of course, come purchase from you. Cool. No, I like that. I like that. Yeah, just cool ways of getting getting engaged and, and followed. I think, you know, a lot of people play the small business card like we do on all of our Amazon brands. Um, we're a small business. We're a small business. A customer gets upset. Hey, we're a small business. Or they do something very nice for us. Thank you. It really supports our small business. So exactly. use that to your advantage because you can't always do that when you're at a large scale. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really good tip for, for growing up with a brand. Um, and then like just on the top of the social media, you run the 23 agency. Uh, talk a little bit about you know, 23 agency, what you guys do, how you guys help clients and the importance of social media presence these days for brands, um, just because it's becoming so crucial for us these days. Mm -hmm. So we help grow and manage social media platforms, um, specifically, I guess you would, if I could say there's one that we specialize in the most, it's definitely Instagram. Um, I'll kind of give you a little uh, example. So a reason why I tell people it's so important to be on social media is social proof, especially if you are marketing to a younger audience. So for example, say you are on a vacation and you're like, where am I going to go eat? I'm going to, you know, you're going to Google some places. And generally a lot of the times there's going to be three couple blogs that show that it's always going to be the same restaurants and they're always going to, you know, rate them one to 10, but there's not a lot of detail on them. So you're probably going to head to Instagram or Facebook and see, you know, are they, are they posting on social media? What does the restaurant look like? What kind of vibe am I going to expect? People like to know what they're walking into. So if you are a, a restaurant in this place where there's a lot of tourists and you're not using benefit, like using social media, they're probably, you're the, the tourists are more likely to go to a place where they can, they're going to know what to expect. You know, they they can see that people have been tagging you and people comment on your photos and people actually enjoy going to your place um, rather than the person who, who doesn't do that. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's definitely very important. Even if it's just 
to have your information on. So you have somewhere to refer people to. Um, there's definitely different ways of using social media for your business. Doesn't mean you always have to, your, your main goal has to be to grow and gain hundreds and thousands of followers. But even if it's just for more information and more different types of content, um, it's definitely very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Especially with, uh, like today's day and age, all these people growing up in like Gen Z and Gen Y and everything like that, were so reliant on social media. Like I can't get off my freaking phone. Um, like I spend a lot of time on social media. Well, how, where it just like as a business, um, any business should spend time with their customers they're spending time. Right. Exactly. So that's the way that I always have pictured it. Um, and you know, again, same thing, I'll relate it back to Amazon for all of the Amazon listeners on here, having a social media is beneficial, especially when, most customers will look at a brand and they'll be like, oh, wow, this is kind of cool. Let's go see if they have a so like social media. If it's a new product launch and you have no social proof, well, maybe they're going to go look at social media to see what else you do. Um, so very, very powerful. Um, now, obviously, there's a lot of stuff that goes on the back end of social media to make it work, to keep engagement up and all that kind of stuff. Uh, why don't we talk about that? Like, what does, uh, what does social management really look like? Uh, all of the back end stuff, because I think a lot of people think it's just like posting and hoping things work but it's really not at the end of the day there's a method to the madness mm -hmm. um break that down as well as you can i'm gonna say um and yeah okay maybe okay. what i'll do is i'll run through kind of what it looks like when we hire on a client so first thing is we will obviously gather all of the the assets that the client has so photos logos uh, colors, fonts, anything under the sun that we could find uh, useful. And then we will go and we'll have a meeting where we talk about, okay, so what are, what are the goals for this month? What do we want to be focusing on? Are there any events worth mentioning? Special dates? Maybe there's a holiday that you want to post about. Maybe there's, um, you have a sale coming up or there's a new product launch. What are the, what are the things that you want to be talking about? And then, of course, we break it down into, okay, now let's figure out what the content's going to look like for this month. So then we go into the brand pillars. I always say the brand pillars, um, a lot of the time they end up falling under the four E's, which is education, entertainment, emotion, and engagement. And you want to rotate between those. So making sure that you are following under those four E's while also incorporating all of those special dates for that month. And then we go and we create the content, put, make, create the beautiful layout and all of that. And then another thing to think about is we'll also do the hashtag research. And then we put those with all of the images. Hashtags are something that um, I frequently get asked about. A lot of the, it, it changes very frequently. For example, I could have sworn a month ago, you had to use 20 hashtags. Now it was released, you only have to use five to eight. So it's very you know, our job is also to make sure that we're staying up to date with the information. So making sure that the hashtags reflect what the, the current uh, rules, I guess, are. And then once everything is scheduled and ready to go, the client approves it. And then on a day-to-day -day basis, it kind of, it's kind of the same. So we'll make sure the photo is posted. We'll make sure there's 15 to 20 minutes of engagement every day. So going in, finding your ideal client, your ideal customer and engaging with them, engaging with the people who like the photo, comment on the photo. And then once that is done, then actually, no, sorry, I missed a thing. So once the, <laughs> once the post is posted, we want to make sure there's alt text, which is essentially SEO for Instagram, um, location, tags, all of that. There's so many little things that people don't realize go into just posting a photo on Instagram if you want it to work in your favor. If you just want to post to post, go ahead, throw it up there. And what is it called? I read that yesterday, uh, post and ghost. So you post it and then you just get off the app that's fine, but you're probably not going to grow if you do that. So you really want to make sure you have that little checklist. And we do that every single day for all of the clients. And yeah, I think I, I think I covered the whole strategy, I guess. No, totally, totally. No, I think that, um, yeah, again, there's a lot that goes behind it. And I think anybody looking to engage with a social agency, I uh, like the 23 agencies as a whole, like I was pretty blindsided as well when I first started learning about all this kind of stuff. Cause it's not, it's a full-time job. Like People say that they have marketing managers and social media managers. Like it's because it's not easy. 
um, like doing things like the community engagement and all that kind of stuff, keeping up to date. There's no blanket statement for everything. It's, you know, you got to adapt and figure out where your customers are at and always be finding those new customers. And in turn, that means higher engagement. Um, what does higher engagement mean for a client if, if, if they're not pushing that? Uh, and what do you think that they're missing out on? Sorry, can you repeat that, please? What does high engagement look like and what does, what can it result to? Like what's, uh, what's the benefit of having a good engagement rate mm -hmm. um, when, when on social media? Okay, yeah. So uh, high engagement is, you know, people are actually liking and commenting and seeing your posts. The algorithm on Instagram is so finicky. It's so hit or miss. So you want to make sure that you are having the best chance that your audience, the people who are following you are going to see your posts. So you want to ensure like you're posting at the right times. you're posting, you know, you're looking at the analytics and you're seeing, okay, you know, they're obviously on the app at 7 PM. So you're not going to go post at 12 PM. That would make no sense. Cause then no one's going to see it. Um, you know, checking your story views, seeing how many people are looking at it when there's a lot of little analytics that have to be tracked and then you have to adjust based on the analytics. Um, and when it comes to what does it look like when you have a high engagement, like I said, it's the likes, it's the comments. And of course, that's going to help build that community, which is in turn possibly going to lead to sales in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. But yeah, just like trust as well, right? Like people yes, want to see, exactly. you know, if, if you have 100,000 followers, but you get 10 likes, it's a little concerning right? As a brand at the end of the day. So it's very important that you're, you're engaging with the right people. Um, now in regards to like, I know Instagram has changed so much lately and they're always changing. It used to be a lot easier to grow than it is now. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of those things that people are doing to consistently grow on Instagram and what are, so two questions, that's number one, number two, um, what changes have been dominant as of late? I know, um, like using reels, for example, um, and why is it important to keep up with those changes um, to, to really focus on growth? That was such a long question. I think I forgot the first one. The first um, one. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's answer the second one first then. Uh, okay. In the, Instagram world. the biggest changes that have been of recent, or I would say the number one biggest change is that it was released that Instagram is no longer a photo sharing app. That being said, it does not mean you should go and just create videos because Adam Missouri told you, I think that's how you say his name, um, because you think it's going to work. If you don't like creating videos and you are not good at creating videos, you should not create videos. I'm not saying that you should never create videos, but if you are struggling to even just post one photo a day, you shouldn't go think, okay, now I'm going to go start posting videos. Um, another change Reels, of course, is um, what they're doing to compete with TikTok. I personally really like Reels. I think it's a lot easier to use than TikTok. Um, and it's all in one platform, which is nice. Um, another thing that's come out, I mean, this is more for the creators. I believe they're launching ways to, you can actually start getting paid through your Reels, through the views, which is awesome. So uh, being consistent with that and trying to grow that is great. Um, but like I said before, if you don't like it, it's probably not the best thing to do because it will reflect on the video. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Um, and then other platforms, I know you guys do, uh, like Facebook and all that kind of stuff as well. Do you see an upward and rising of other platforms? Is there other things that people should know about these other platforms? Um, and yeah, just, just that as a whole. Yeah. Um, well, obviously there's TikTok. That's probably the, the biggest one right now. I think TikTok is great if you have time to create, you know, multiple videos a day, go have at her. But, um, you know, it's really easy to get discouraged on that app because there's a kind of, I think stigma, is that the right word? That um, yep. you're going to blow up overnight. And when people don't, they get upset and they give up. So, you know, you have to go, you really have to be doing it for the right reasons. If you're just doing it to blow up, you're probably not going to blow up. Um, people always say that's kind of the, the, the one platform that is very real. People gravitate towards real life content. It's not like Instagram where there's curated images. 
uh, where you don't see people's actual life. If you're going to go show something that is kind of created for Instagram, if you're going to go put that on TikTok, it's probably not going to do as well. Um, not saying it's never going to do as well, but there is a chance. Mm -hmm. Um, another one I would say is Pinterest, Pinterest for product-based businesses or even service-based actually, um, is really good for driving traffic. Um, now all of the apps have some form of TikTok or real. So for example, Pinterest has idea pins and, uh, what is the other one? YouTube has YouTube shorts. Facebook now has reels. So, Mm -hmm. or they're coming out with the reels. So everyone has it. You kind of just have to pick the platform that you like the best and perfect that. And once you perfect one, add another, don't try and do all of them. Yes, you can go repurpose them, but if you think about it, it's going to take so much time. And if you don't like doing it, like I mentioned before, it's going to um, be evident to the audience. Mm -hmm, mm Got to be bought in for sure. Cool. I think, um, I think that's everything I wanted to cover in specific. Do you, do you think that there's anything that's worth noting about uh, social media management as a whole um, before, before we cap things off here? Actually, you know what? We could talk about like the importance of, um, you know, knowing your target market, who the ideal customer actually is um, and what that looks like um, and how that translates into um, like social platforms and marketing as a whole. Um, so my first question to you would be, um, why is it important to understand who you're targeting and, um, how, yeah, how does that translate into marketing as a whole? Yeah. So when you're, you know, posting on Instagram and you have no one in mind, you're like, you have no idea who you're, you know, putting it out to, you're essentially throwing past at the wall, hoping it sticks you have no idea who's seeing it. You have no idea who you're trying to talk to. So you really want to know who exactly is the person you're trying to target and then create, every time you're creating content, think of that person. So let's, you have to create a brand persona. I always say, give them a name. So let's say her name's Sally. You know, I'm, every time I create content for Blaney Bikini, I'm going to think about Sally. What does Sally want to see? What does she like seeing? Does she like seeing try on videos? Does she like seeing reposts of influencers? Does she like to see quotes? Does she like to see, does she like carousels? Does she like videos? And then adjusting everything to to target her. There's no point in marketing to someone who is not your ideal customer. Even if it's your mom, your aunt, your sister, your brother, your boyfriend, if they're not your ideal customer, it doesn't matter. (laughs) So always think of your ideal customer when you are creating your content and marketing. Yeah, totally. And I think what comes to mind for that is like less is more, right? So for example, like why reach a thousand people and have a 10% conversion uh, when you can reach a half the amount and have the like double the conversion, for example, like higher quality um, will go a really long way. I think just like engagement wise on, on platforms, but I think it'll do better for your business in the long term. And I think people need to realize that because, you know, if you can cultivate and build like this cult like following and people that actually want to work with you, then it's not just a transaction. You're now trying to build a relationship with these people. Exactly. And kind of touching on the the quality of the followers, you know, people tell me all the time, why can't I just go buy a hundred thousand followers? And I'm like, okay, which of those hundred thousand followers that are fake are going to be buying from you? None of them. It makes more sense to have a hundred <laughs> followers where 50% of them are actual real people who would buy from you than to have a hundred thousand and have none of them. Totally. So if you've ever thought of buying followers, there is your, <laughs> your, your uh, sign to not do that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, um, it's interesting because a lot of people forget about that. They just like pick a product because they're so passionate about it. And they're like, Oh, this is the best product in the world. And then they don't have a way of having to know where they target or who they target. So that like impacts like messaging, for example, it impacts the way your packaging looks It impacts the way your social feeds look and all that kind of stuff. And I know, uh, I know that you do that quite well with your clients and, and have a good understanding about that because it's all about like clear communication. And I'm sure you can attest to that. Exactly. exactly. Cool. Um, yeah, no, I think, um, 
that's a really good topic as a whole. Um, is there any other tips that you can give on that? Like building a buying persona um, and yeah, just the importance of it. I would say if you are planning on starting anything, whether it's a product-based, service-based, whatever it is, create that persona before you do anything. So I know, you know, you, for example, have come to me and been like, okay, like I have my logo. Now what? I'm like, no, you create the logo after you know who you're marketing to. There's no point in creating a logo (laughs) when you don't know who it's for, because you could be creating a logo that you like, but if you're marketing towards me, I'm a woman, I'm probably not going to like what you create. Uh, I'm not saying (laughs) that's always the case, but I know you, so I can say that I probably won't like it. Um, (laughs) So yeah, it all... All stems back to communication to clients or to communication to customers. Yes. So making sure that you're always creating that persona before you do anything. So before you pick your colors, before you pick the fonts you use, before you pick, uh, you know, what your packaging is going to look like and what kind of uh, tone of voice will you be using? Because, for example, if you're marketing towards you know, people in their forties, you can't talk like you're a Gen Z because it's not going to be received by them. So always having that, that person in your mind, I like to give them a name. Like I said, so give them a name, act like they're a real person and make sure that every single thing you do for your brand is for them. Cool. Yeah. I love that tip. Lesson learned. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Zanae, uh, thanks for coming on. I appreciate the time. Um, If you want to pimp yourself out, where can people find you? How can people connect with you? And um, if they are looking to work with you uh, at a social management standpoint, uh, where can they find the 23 Agency? Okay, so you can find me at Zanae Tehran on most things. Uh, You can find Bellina Bikini at Shop Bellina Bikini or shopbellinabikini.com. 23 Agency, you can find us at 23 Agency Official on Instagram and 23agency.com. If you want to work with us, you can go to the website and then book a call for a free consultation. Okay, sounds good. Thanks again and hope you have a good day. Wonderful. Thank you.